The Kremlin has declared a counter-terrorist operation in three regions of the Russian Federation adjacent to Ukraine, including Kursk. This could mean that Vladimir Putin has appointed FSB director Alexander Botnikov, whom he trusts most among the security forces, to lead the defense of Kursk, according to the American Institute for the Study of War, ISW. Analysts note that Botnikov has previously proven himself to be an effective crisis manager for the Kremlin regime. It is believed that it was Botnikov who managed to achieve a peaceful resolution to the Wagner Rebellion led by Yevgeny Prigozhin in June 2023. Later in March 2024, Putin publicly praised the FSB for safely holding the so-called presidential elections. Finally, purely formally, according to Russian law, it is the special services, not the army, that should lead the counter-terrorist operation. The announcement of a counter-terrorist operation led by Botnikov indicates that Putin was dissatisfied with how the Russian military command handled the situation in the Kursk region, the ISW believes. Analysts point out in particular that the chief of the general staff, Army General Valery Gerasimov, lied to Putin during a meeting on August the 7th that his troops were effectively in control of the situation and had stopped the Ukrainian advance in the Kursk region. Later, a meeting of the Russian Security Council was held, of which Gerasimov is not a member and was not specifically invited. However, it is known that Botnikov gave a report at that meeting. At the same time, ISW believes that the format of the counter-terrorist operation under the leadership of the FSB and Botnikov could complicate matters for the Russians and reduce the effectiveness of their actions in trying to stop the advance of the Ukrainians. After all, we are talking about full-fledged frontline battles which will require the involvement of full-fledged army units. Consequently, the Russian Defense Ministry will be obliged to transfer such units to the FSB, which, according to analysts, will lead to additional friction between these already unfriendly structures. Ihor Taishkevich, an Ukrainian expert on international and domestic politics, noted that the political framework in which Ukraine must operate is changing. He stated this on Espresso TV. Ukraine has succeeded in convincing its partners, who previously prohibited the use of Western weapons against Russian territory, to allow such strikes. We now see Western weapons including not only missiles, but also armored vehicles entering the Russian territory. This is one of the first conclusions we can draw from the start of the operation in the Kursk region. It indicates a shift in the political balance or framework within which Ukraine must operate, Taishkevich said. According to him, President Zelensky and Ukraine's partners recognize the possibility of peace talks with Russia. But the question arises regarding who will be at the negotiating table and their positions. Russia might attempt to replicate the Minsk negotiations, which means leaving some occupied Ukrainian territories out of the discussions. When the Minsk agreements were signed, Crimea was excluded from the negotiations and only Donbass was addressed. If Ukraine controls part of Russia and Russia proposes leaving some occupied Ukrainian territory out of the negotiations, Ukraine might counter with a similar proposal, suggesting that the Kursk region also be excluded from the talks. Taishkevich emphasized, Political media outlet writes that the large-scale offensive of the Ukrainian armed forces in the Kursk region is supported by Kyiv's allies in the West. There are no signs that the partners are pressuring Ukraine to soften its advance into Russian territory. The article notes that even cautious Germany, which refused to take risks, not wanting to provoke Russian President Putin, especially when it came to arms supplies to Kyiv, is not flashing any red lights regarding the operation of Ukrainian forces in the Kursk region. Ukraine has the right to self-defense enshrined in international law. This is not limited to its territory, the German foreign ministry said in a comment to the publication's journalists. The publication notes that it is not yet clear what the long-term goals of the Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region are, but four days after it began, there is no sign of an imminent end to hostilities in the territory. Moreover, in the early hours of Friday, Ukraine launched a large-scale drone attack on the infrastructure of the Lipetsk region deep in Russia, hitting a key airbase.